Hey everyone, it's Kayla Simone. Welcome back to my channel. Excuse the quality ahead of time. I am filming in my bathroom right now. It's the day after Christmas and um, yeah, I'm filming on my phone also. So uh, things have been really, really crazy, really, really hectic. Um, obviously, I always take these little hiatuses on my YouTube channel, Instagram, whatever. Um, and obviously it was for a good reason. The last time I talked to you guys, I was pregnant and now my baby is a month old. So this is just me checking in, giving you an update on my life since I have become a new mommy. Um, and in this video, I just wanna talk about like the different changes, things that I've been going through, and also just giving you updates on being a mom, what my labor and delivery story was like being in um, the middle of a pandemic, and just kind of sharing with you all, hoping that this video will help somebody else because I know I use the internet to look up absolutely everything. So if you are interested in watching this video, stay tuned and keep on watching. I initially, my due date was set for January 1st, 2021. However, um, most of you know that babies tend to do whatever they wanna do. So um, my baby girl decided she was gonna come two days after Thanksgiving, which was November the 28th. So it was on a Saturday. Um, my fiance and I were at home. It was about like 6 45 in the morning. And I just remember getting up because I felt wet. Like, um, not that I had peed on myself, but I just felt wet. Um, the bed wasn't wet per se, but I just felt like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but normally I get up in the middle of the night to pee anyway. Anybody knows who's been pregnant, you have a baby on your bladder, you are using the restroom all the time. So, um, I end up going to the restroom and when I stood up, like this fluid was dripping down my leg and I was like, I don't think my water broke. I don't think my water broke. Like, no, my water cannot be breaking right now. I was in denial. Also, um, my pain tolerance is pretty high. So uh, I did not have any contractions, was not feeling any pain, no stomach pain, abdominal pain, pelvic pain whatsoever. So um, I actually was able to pee. And um, once I got done, you know, us girls, we wipe, flush your toilet, stand up, wash your hands. As I'm washing my hands, I still have stuff running down my leg. And I'm like, I just peed and there's no urge to pee. So at this point, it's like, okay, this is a little fishy. What's going on? Um, and it just kept trickling down my leg, like little by little. But it was like, I was not peeing. And I'm like, okay, I think it's time to wake him up. I think my water broke. So I'm like... Cameron, Cameron, and he's like a really heavy sleeper. And all I said was, I think my water broke. And all I heard was like, doom, 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 doom. And he went to go grab me some clothes, threw some clothes at me. It's like, come on, we gotta go to the hospital now, call him. So I called, they give us like a maternal health line. So I called the maternal health line, it's a pager. Um, they paid you back and ask you questions. And I told them that I was on the way into the hospital. They said they'll see me when I got there. And when I got there, um, long story short, they willed me up. <laughs> they willed me up to um, the women's hospital part through emergency. We went to emergency and the hospital was only like 15 minutes away. Um, we went through emergency and um, Cameron went to go park his car. And by the time he came in, they had already, already willed me upstairs. So he had to find me in the hospital. They were already admitting me in, into a room. Everybody that talked to me was really confused because they're like, okay, you're saying that your water broke, but like you seem completely fine. And literally when I tell y'all I was in the hospital just like this, I was just like this. I was like, yeah, um, this is my name, blah, blah. No breathing noises, no, you know, pain, nothing like that. Once the nurse that was checking me in was like, um, do you need this wheelchair? I was like, no. And they were like, okay, this is your room right here. And they told me to change into a gown. And so I changed into um, my hospital gown and all these nurses came in, they hooked me up to monitors, they were checking my baby's heart rate. Um, and of course, uh, the most painful part to me was they had to keep checking my cervix. So they of course reach in with two fingers, check my cervix and the, the doctor said that um, I feel hair. So you're three centimeters dilated and you're gonna have this baby today. It's November 28th. She's a whole five weeks early. So we're sitting there like, 
I'm sitting there like, I was not mentally prepared to have this baby like right now. Um, and it was so funny because I was gonna take my group B strep test. Um, I was only 35 weeks, so I was gonna take it week 36. So I was gonna take it that week. I was supposed to, I already had her car seat in my car, but I was supposed to, um, I was getting my nursing bras in the mail, pack my hospital bag this, this actual weekend that I'm in the hospital and boom, I'm in the hospital, they're admitting me and I'm gonna have this baby as we speak. So my fiance gets on the phone with my mom, his mom, everybody and calls them and says, hey, Kayla just went into labor. And so um, they take me to my delivery room, which wasn't too far. They wheeled me on the bed to my delivery room. And like I said, the most painful part up to this point was them checking my cervix. I did not feel any contractions while I was three centimeters dilated. Um, I didn't probably start to feel my contractions until I was about five or six meters dilated. Um, I already made up in my mind at that point in time that I wanted an epidural. Um, they were talking to me about potentially having a C-section. Um, just because initially when they brought me in, the baby's heart rate was dropping. And I think it's because Kennedy, which is my daughter's name, she was um, on her umbilical cord. She was sitting on it, I believe. So um, they were talking to me about a C-section, but they had me lay on my left side and that seemed to help a lot. So all while I was in labor, I was pretty much tilted to the left or laying on my left side. And that pretty much gave her what she needed. Um, they had to replace fluids because my water broke. Um, but they wanted to loosen up that umbilical cord. So they had to catheters. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Catheters are the worst thing known to man, in my personal opinion. So uncomfortable, not a thing. It's a no for me. It's a no for me. So um, that outside of them checking my cervix, again, was probably the two most uncomfortable parts of my labor. Um, so I was dilating pretty fast. Like I said, we, I don't know if I did say this, but 6.45 is when I woke up and my water broke. But um, they admitted me in the hospital about 7.30. And then I want to say I was like five meters dilated by like noon or one o'clock. No, actually it was before that, about 11 o'clock. It was early. It's like, but I was so out of it and time was moving so fast. Um, basically, I had my baby at 1.17. And um, <laughs> in between me being five meters dilated, me getting my epidural, which did not hurt to me at all. Um, and I think just me and needles just, we, the IV hurt worse than the epidural to me. Um, I did not like having the IV in my arm at all. And because I did not have my group B strep test at that time, after I got my epidural, they also fed antibiotics through my IV. Now I'm, already allergic to penicillin and amoxicillin. Um, by allergic, I mean my face will swell up. I look like Hitch or I look like Martin, you know, when he got beat up by Tommy Hearns, like that's what I look like. And um, so they gave me another one called, I think it's called vacuum and back for short. They gave me that and apparently I'm allergic to that too. So while I am eight meters dilated in labor, now I don't really feel my lower half because I have the epidural. I just feel pressure, but I don't feel pain. So I'm like feeling this pushing. And then I'm noticing like I am itching furiously. My scalp is itching like nobody's business. And I'm like, okay, I don't have itchy scalp. I don't suffer from itchy scalp. I just wash my hair. Then my face starts itching, then my neck and then my chest. And I am freaking out. And it's like a burning itching. And so I told the nurse like, um, I'm itching a lot. Of course I have a mask on because it's COVID. And I did pull my mask down for a split second so the nurse knew what I looked like prior to my face swelling up. Um, and literally she was like, oh, we need to get you some Benadryl. So now they have to give me Benadryl to combat the vac that they put in my IV because they were trying to be nice, give me antibiotics for the baby, but clearly I'm just allergic to a decent amount of antibiotics. I, I don't know why this is happening to me. So the Benadryl is making me stupid drowsy. Um, Cameron, by this time, my fiance, he had gone home to get her bag ready, assuming we were gonna be able to take her home. And um, the doctor, the midwife at the time that was on staff that delivered um, my baby, she came 
And there was a whole team, mind you, and she came and she was like, where's the fiance? And I said, he's at home. My mom was like, my mom by this time is in the room. So my mom and my fiance were there when I delivered the baby. And my mom calls him and she's like, Cameron, um, the nurse said you need to get here now. Like, Kayla's gonna have this baby soon. You need to get here now. She doesn't care what's in the dryer. Don't pack any clothes. Don't worry about it. Just come on. So he drops everything. He drives 15 minutes back to the hospital. He comes. And by the time he gets there, I want to say if my concept of time at this point was correct, because I'm in and out of it. I'm on Benadryl and Epidural. And I know they just told me when I feel like I really, really have to poop, let them know because it's probably time to push. And around one o'clock, I told them I feel like I have to poop. <laughs> and um, I pushed probably maximum 10 times and my baby was born. Uh, Cameron was super, super supportive and he held my hand and my leg the whole time. And like, I was again, kind of on my left side and the, all the midwives, doctors, nurses were around me. Cameron was on my side and he held my hand and I pushed and we had our baby. So it sounded kind of easy. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like I said, the worst part for me was checking my cervix and the catheters. I can't, I can't with either one of those. Um, and then after that, when you have a vaginal delivery, the process really is for you to stay in the hospital only two days. And then, um, but unfortunately, well, fortunately she was okay, but because my baby was five weeks early, she was in the NICU for about a week um, post delivery. And so that was a little difficult after I left the hospital. It was kind of awesome when I was there and I would only was a floor away and I would come up and down stairs as I please literally almost every hour to come see her and feed her and change her and do things like that. But when it was time for me to leave the hospital, Oh my God, I probably cried like 20 times on the way home because it's just really not natural leaving the hospital without your baby. However, the nurses um, on the NICU floor were absolutely amazing. I can say that they were um, just really, really awesome with how they were taking care of her and being very open and honest with Cameron and I every time we went to the floor and just giving us information that we needed to know and explaining us, explaining to us, you know, what to do with our child, um, different little things that we didn't know just being new parents. So it was really, really cool. Um, while I was there, like I said, it was just really heartbreaking to leave the hospital without my child. So um, that is just what happened. That's my labor and delivery story, <laughs> uh, pretty much. Um, I will insert clips here and there just so you can see um, pictures and things like that of that day and what happened or just even the days following. Now, on to the next part about having a baby during COVID and um, what that was like. So I will be super honest in saying that um, coronavirus was not the biggest uh, factor in me being uncomfortable, me being scared, and me being highly irritated during this process. Um, the, the virus itself. I wasn't scared because somebody was coughing near my baby or me or my family. I wasn't scared because of any of those things. However, I was, um, you, you, are, you already have to understand that like when you have a kid, when you're pregnant, post-pregnancy, all of that, your hormones are doing a million different things that they may or may not have been doing prior to you having this child. And so your feelings are all over the place. And for you to be in a hospital, which is not a place like the mall where people tend to frequent because it's fun, people are typically at a hospital because they're sick, they're visiting someone who's sick, or in this case, somebody was born and that was a great thing, but we don't want to stay at the hospital. Um, the food isn't that great. Um, and it, while it's comfortable and they treat you nice while you're there, it's just not a place that um, I typically want to stay. I don't want to stay in the hospital. Uh, none of us wanted to be there. We were only there for my child. So all that being said, I know that healthcare workers are going through it right now. I know they are terrified and scared for their lives because they encounter sickly people on a daily basis. And, you know, COVID is running rampant and people aren't taking the precautions that they need to take in order for, you know, this virus to calm down. 
how and ever. Um, when you have people that are in the hospital, not by their own will, <clears throat> not because they want to be, I wanted nothing more than to take my child home after um, I had her. But I understood that they needed to get her feeding together and things like that before she came home. So I didn't have to bring her back. But everybody that was at the front check-in parts of the hospital, whether it was the front door, the front desk, um, any information type person at the hospital were complete assholes. And that's just me being honest. They were so rude, so nasty. Um, and I'll give you an example is that the second day, and I don't, like I said, disclaimer, there is no issue with the actual doctors and nurses. They were amazing. It was the admin staff that again, met you at the front desk, at the front door. And to me, a hospital is just like a church. Like I don't want to come in and get service if at the door you the usher and you nasty. You don't know how to act, you don't know how to speak to people, you can't even say hello, and for some reason your mask prohibits you from having manners. I'm not saying you have to hug me, I'm not saying you have to shake my hand, you have to do none of those things, but what you do need to do is keep in mind that you don't know why I'm here, I could be seeing someone with cancer, or in my case, I could be visiting my child that I wish was home with me, and I'm discharged, and I'm just coming because I wanna see how she's doing, what she's doing, what her progress is, and I'm a nervous wreck because I'm leaving someone that's been with me, inside of me for the last eight months in a hospital because you guys have COVID restrictions. So bear with me if I'm a little anxious to see my kid. You get what I'm saying? So um, one example was two days. No, it wasn't even two days. It was a day because I didn't play that. It was a day after I got discharged, which means I didn't get to see her, um, you know, as much as I was seeing her. And I went up to the hospital on my lunch break because, yes, I was still working and maternity leave was not in place when I had my baby. Um, so I went up to the hospital and got to the front door. They gave us another mask, even though we already had it on mask. That's totally fine. I'll just keep this one. And I asked to go to the NICU. And the lady told me I could not go up there because my name was not on the list for the child that I pushed out two days ago. What? How do you not list her parents as automatic visitors? Who are you guys? Not to mention what was so irritating about that whole process is that while I was delivering her, there could only the rule was that there could only be two people in the room, which was at the time my mom and my fiance. Those two were in the room. When they took me to postpartum, I could only have one person stay with me for the duration of my hospital visit. What sense did that make? They were already in there when I pushed the baby out. So now you have to reduce it to one. I have to choose between my mom and my fiance. Um, and they wouldn't even, my fiance had to go home. And so instead of just, they had, they made a big deal about letting my mom just take me up to my postpartum room and sitting with me until her ride came and my fiance came and they swapped off, even though they both were already in the hospital. It was so stupid. So um, that happened. You know, um, my dad came to the hospital and he wanted to see me. And again, I was in labor when he decided to get on a plane and fly down here. So I had no idea he was even in the state and he couldn't even come see me on the postpartum floor. It was really sad. Like, um, I think that's pretty much um, one of the worst things was their policy. Like they didn't really have it figured out. And then again, fast forwarding to when I tried to go back up and visit my baby, I had to call the NICU floor and they were like, hey mom, yeah, come on up. And I said, no, sorry guys. They asked, could you put my name on the list? The nurse was like, what? So they put my name on the list to go see them. And then I told my mom, like, how do I explain this? Let me go back. Cameron and I are apparently supposed to be the only two people throughout the duration of Kennedy's stay in the hospital to go see her in the NICU, period. So mom and dad had been visiting her this whole time. Mom and dad were in the hospital. So when mom and dad got discharged from the hospital, they should have been still the only ones on the list, which is why I was puzzled when they told me I wasn't on the list to go see my child. I'm like, wait a minute. So when I got discharged, you guys just took me out of the system to the point where I have to put myself back on the list. So needless to say, my fiance wasn't on the list either, but my mom was with me. We had valeted the car at the hospital and they told her she couldn't even wait in the lobby. 
I'm not leaving my mom outside. So we did ask, um, you know, could we, could she go upstairs? And she did, went upstairs, um, put her on the list. But my mom was like, I don't want me being on the list to put, you know, my fiance at, in, at risk to not be able to see his kid over the next couple. Cause we didn't know how long she was going to be in the hospital. And um, she was like, oh man, like I wish they could take me off the list. So one of the nurses was nice enough to take my mom off the list because she was like, I'm not gonna come up here. I want her dad to be able to see her. Um, that nurse will not be named. The hospital won't be named because I just don't want to put anybody's job in danger. But um, she was really understanding and she knew that like the way things were working, it just didn't make sense. Needless to say, the list was irrelevant because her father and I went back up there that same day. Um, I want to say it was like 10 o'clock at night. It was stupid that we went that late because he had to work, but we just wanted to see our kid. There was nobody there to check us in, to ask us any of the 15 million COVID questions. They, The security guard was there to give us a mask and that was it. So you mean to tell me literally five hours ago I was here you guys gave us the rundown, told us that if we weren't on the list, we couldn't come see our own child and all this, all these other things. There can only be two visitors for the rest of her visit, blah, blah, blah. And then when we come back, not even five hours later, there's no restrictions. There's nobody to stop us. There's nobody to talk to us. So what standards are you guys keeping? So it was just really frustrating dealing with the hospital staff, not the nurses and doctors again, but the staff. And we were so polite, even though we didn't necessarily agree with everything that was going on. And the nurses in the NICU saw how sweet we were and how, um, you know, involved we were with coming to see our kid. Because I feel like we were the only parents that were consistently down there seeing our kid. And they actually had an intern resident um, pediatrician um, who was coming in and he wanted to do an interview um, and just ask us some questions about our stay. And I told him like he, the staff, as far as the nurses and doctors have been amazing. They've been really sweet. They call me every day to check on me. They ask, you know, ask me how I'm doing as well as telling me how my child is doing when I'm not there. Um, however, the people at the front are just ridiculous. You know, they act like they don't want to speak to you. They act like you're the issue as if people aren't at the hospital to get help or to get somebody healed or fixed and then leave. No one wants to stay in the hospital. That's not a place that you just, it's not a resort. And so um, I think that was probably the biggest thing for me is that they don't really quite have it figured out in the hospital as far as COVID restrictions. They, you know, are restricting visiting, um, but not taking into account that if, you know, these people are living in the same house which we end up having to take the baby back to the hospital because she wasn't feeding. Um, she had a little incident where she was taking like five hours in between feedings and I knew that wasn't normal. So we took her back, um, but they wouldn't let her dad up. And, and it's just like, we're all in the same house. If he were to have COVID, I would have COVID. Um, well, not, and not necessarily, but the, you get it. You're trying to limit something that she's going to go home in that environment anyway. That that person lives with her. So either one of us could bring something. And it was almost like it wasn't anybody can lie about those questions. It just, it didn't make sense. And it's really hard. And I understand that it's hard for some of the nurses because they're dealing with people every day. But it wasn't like we weren't wearing our masks. It wasn't like the nurses weren't wearing their masks and we weren't, you know, doing all the things that they asked us to do. So, um, you know, I am empathetic to their plight and their work situation and what they have to do every day. And they're the ones who have to tell people they can't come in, even though um, they don't even necessarily agree. So it was just an emotional roller coaster in that sense. I don't want to go back to the hospital. I'm doing everything in my power to keep my child from being in the hospital, specifically because of the environment and how contagious it is. Um, and it's just crazy that, you know, nothing's normal. Like you can't have a kid or you can't even have your family around in these natural, you know, what, what seems to be a natural situation. And so um, that's probably the biggest thing for me, the most frustrating thing for me about having my child during um, this pandemic is that, you know, we, we, could, we couldn't even get normal family things done in the hospital. It was like everything was a nuisance or I have to page them to see what the rules are. Um, 
and they didn't always completely make sense. So that was unfortunate, but I am super blessed to have my daughter, um, my fiance. Um, this month has been a roller coaster, honestly, just getting back to normal. Our sleep schedule is nowhere near normal. Um, having a newborn is definitely something different, but it's beautiful at the same time. So um, I am gonna end this video here and hopefully I will see you guys soon. I can't make a promise and say that I'll have videos up every couple of weeks or every week. I can't necessarily do that because I'm still getting my bearings and getting things together. But um, <clears throat> I did want to check in with you guys. Love you guys. And hopefully this video was helpful. Um, for anybody, ask me any questions you want to down below in the, uh, in the comment section. I will um, put my information in the description box. And I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.